So um, today I will talk about uh, some methods for generating nodes for Bayesian quadrature. Uh, okay, first, uh, let me briefly review Bayesian quadrature and faculty points, uh, although most of you may be familiar with them. Uh, we consider a uh, region uh, in the d-dimensional Euclidean space and a positive definite kernel and our reproducing kernel Hilbert space on the region with the reproducing kernel K. Then an endpoint quadrature formula for functions in the space is given by this formula uh, where uh, X sub N is the set of distinct nodes and uh, W sub N is the set of weights. Uh, for given uh, nodes and weights, uh, we can estimate the error of the formula. That is, uh, we can provide the worst case error. So uh, it is defined by this expression, uh, that is the norm of the error operator. It is well known that the squared worst case error is given by this e explicit formula, uh, which depends on kernel, uh, nodes, and weights. In general, it is de desirable to construct nodes and weights that make the worst case error as small as possible. So uh, if we fix the nodes, uh, the squared worst case error is equal to a quadratic form with respect to the weights. Therefore, uh, its minimizer is easily found. Uh, that is to say, it is uh, given by uh, this formula. Uh, the weight vector uh, is equal to the inverse of the kernel matrix times uh, the integral of this vector valued function. So uh, Bayesian quadrature formula is equal to that given by uh, this uh, weight, these weights. Uh, so uh, of course, this is an alternative interpretation of the Bayesian quadrature. Uh, which uh, uh, Tony explained in the previous talk. So uh, what remains to be considered is the choice of the nodes. There, exi there exists some nodes for generating nodes, uh, Monte Carlo methods, quasi Monte Carlo methods, and uh, some greedy methods. Uh, for example, uh, a geometric method is proposed uh, which it choose the next nodes uh, by maximizing this value. Furthermore, uh, a well-known method is uh, the sequential Bayesian quadrature, uh, which it choose ne the next node uh, by uh, minimizing this value. That is to say, a uh, we choose uh, the next node uh, so that uh, the worst case error is as uh, small as possible. And so uh, another greedy method uh, called orthogonal matching pursuit is proposed by uh, Oetash Hagen. And so uh, also uh, there are some uh, non-greedy methods, uh, a method uh, by nonlinear equation and so a method by second order com programming uh, proposed uh, by myself. So uh, the aim of this study is propose, uh, to propose a method based on an optimization with respect to the whole elements of the node. Okay, uh, to this end, we focus on the fact that the worst case error is given by the ratio of determinants. We can derive this expression by uh, some fundamental formulas in linear algebra. Since the denominator uh, is given by the determinant of the kernel matrix, uh, we intend to uh, maximize the determinant of the matrix, uh, this matrix, uh, which leads to the faculty points. Uh, although, uh, there is no theoretical guarantee that uh, this choice is ideal. So, uh, as is well known, the maximization of the, uh, this determinant is not tractable. 
Therefore, uh, we approximate uh, this determinant by expanding the kernel when it is Gaussian. To this end, uh, we consider expansion and truncation of the Gaussian kernel. First, uh, we expand this squared uh, norm in the Gaussian kernel to obtain the expression in the third line. Then the exponential of the cluster is given by the product of the exponentials of all the components. Furthermore, each exponential is expressed by the Taylor expansion. So, uh, we can provide a further expansion of this expression uh, as follows. By expanding this product uh, and combining all the terms with the same degree, uh, we can obtain the expression in the last line. Here, uh, alpha is a multi-index and uh, this is the uh, degree and uh, this is uh, the multi dimensional factorial from these we can obtain the expansion of the gaussian kernel which is similar to but different from the master expansion then we can obtain a truncated kernel uh, by these ba these basic functions as, sh as shown here the truncated kernel matrix is given by this basic function matrix uh, and its uh, transpose. Uh, this, uh, this is a basic, uh, basic function matrix. And so um, here, uh, the basic function matrix uh, consists of uh, the constant diagonal matrix and uh, the multi dimensional fundamental matrix and uh, the diagonal Gaussian matrix. So, okay, uh, so uh, these, uh, by using this truncated Gaussian kernel, uh, we can approximately reduce the effective points problem to an optimization problem of a logarithmic energy with an external field. Then um, let me begin with the one dimensional case. In this case, uh, we truncate the corner with n basic functions where n is the number of the nodes. Then the multi-dimensional fundamental matrix uh, becomes the usual one. So uh, we have this expression of the uh, truncated kernel, uh, the, the determinant of the truncated kernel. Since we can neglect the constant factor, uh, we focus on this part uh, denoted by W. We maximize this value to obtain approximate facultative points. To make this optimization easy, uh, we take the negative logarithm of uh, W uh, and obtain a logarithmic energy with an external field. To see the property of the energy I, uh, let me show its Hessian matrix. By basic algebra, uh, we have these expressions of uh, its components. The diagonal elements are here and the off diagonal elements are here. Note that the second derivatives of uh, Q and N are positive. Based on this observation, uh, we can show the convexity of I. Uh, in collaboration with Dr. Carbonen and Professor Serka, uh, we have shown that on this uh, simplex, on this simplex, uh, the energy I is convex, and there exists a unique minimizer in this simplex. 
so uh, here is sketch of proof. So um, uh, briefly speaking, uh, we can show that uh, the Hessian matrix is uh, diagonally dominant uh, and uh, fruits diagonal elements are positive, then the Hessian matrix is positive definite. So uh, we can find uh, the minimizer uh, numerically by using a standard optimization technique like the Newton method. So uh, let me go to the higher dimensional cases. We can approximate this uh, determinant uh, in a similar manner to the one dimensional case. So now here, uh, phi is sub m uh, is the much dimensional Fundelman matrix. So uh, the above determinant uh, for higher dimensional cases is uh, not uh, tractable as opposed to the one dimensional case. Therefore, we deal with uh, this determinant directory, uh, which leads to a determinant of logarithmic energy. So uh, by uh, taking the negative logarithm of the determinant, uh, we can obtain this uh, expression, uh, which is called uh, a determinant of logarithmic energy. So uh, by using this, uh, we can approximate a negative logarithm of the determinant of the kernel matrix uh, by this formula. When d is equal to one and the, uh, n is equal to the number of basic functions, uh, the determinant of logarithmic energy is reduced to the usual uh, logarithmic energy in the one dimensional case. Uh, here, uh, we'd like to note that uh, when uh, d is larger than two, uh, the condition n is equal to the number of the basic functions is rather restrictive in that we can't choose n flexibly. Therefore, we do not assume this in the following. So unfortunately, uh, we do not uh, know the precise property of the energy. So uh, we have some problems about the determinant of logarithmic energy. Uh, these are uh, major ones. Uh, number one, uh, it is, it is uh, the energy convex on the certain approximate domain. And number two, can we find effective algorithms to minimize this uh, by using its useful properties? And uh, number three, we, can we derive an upper bound of the worst case error of Bayesian quadrature uh, for a minimizer uh, of the energy? Uh, so uh, I'd like to uh, uh, solve uh, these problems uh, in future work. So uh, in this talk, uh, we test uh, the usefulness of the energy by numerical experiments. Okay, uh, let me show some results of numerical experiments. Here is a procedure for constructing Bayesian quadrature. First, uh, we generate a set of initial nodes. Uh, so uh, in the one dimensional case, uh, we adapt uh, equispace nodes in an interval. In the, uh, in the two-dimensional case, uh, we adapt randomly generated nodes. Second, uh, we find a local minimizer of the energy with a numerical routine by starting from the initial nodes. Finally, we compute the weights for Bayesian quadrature with respect to the nodes uh, obtained, in the, obtained in step two uh, by this formula. Uh, here is our series, here are settings uh, for the one dimensional case. Uh, we use this Gaussian kernel uh, in which epsilon is one over the square root of two and the region uh, is set to be e, the interval minus one, uh, one. In addition, uh, the number we assume uh, the number of the nodes is equal to the number of the basic functions. 
initial sets for initial sets of uh, points are equal spaced and we mean by the energy a one dimensional logarithmic energy a, to get a local minimizer uh, by using f mincon function of matra and these are results about nodes and weights so um uh, we uh, we show uh, the results of some instances in which uh, n is equal to 6, 8, uh, 10, uh, and 12. So now uh, uh, the nodes are on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis indicate the weights. Uh, we can observe that uh, all the weights are positive. In, in these instances. Uh, for comparison, uh, let me show the results uh, uh, generated by a sequential Bayesian quadrature. Uh, here is our uh, results uh, for uh, the case n is equal to 6, 8, 10, and 12. And so, um, uh, we can observe that uh, the nodes uh, are not so uh, well balanced and uh, there are some uh, negative weights. Uh, finally, uh, these are the worst case errors. Uh, we show here uh, the worst case errors uh, given by the minimization of the, log minimization of the logarithmic energy and the sequential Bayesian quadrature. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, e, the minimization of the logarithmic energy outperforms uh, the sequential Bayesian quadrature. Okay, uh, let me go to the two-dimensional case. Uh, here are settings. Uh, we use this Gaussian kernel, uh, epsilon, and uh, the region, uh, which is the square on the plane. Uh, and so uh, we generate initial sets in a similar manner and uh, we minimize the uh, uh, determinant logarithmic energy in a similar manner. These are uh, the results of some uh, instances in which n is equal to 12, uh, 30, 40, and 50. Uh, we can observe that uh, the uh, nodes are well separated and well balanced. Uh, so oh, these are uh, the weights. Uh, so the, uh, this is uh, uh, x2, uh, this is x1, and the vertical axis uh, indicates the weights. Uh, we can observe that all the weights are positive. So, um, uh, let me show you uh, a brief demo uh, when uh, n is equal to uh, 12. So first, uh, we generate uh, the initial points uh, randomly, uh, as shown here, and then uh, execute the optimization, and we can obtain the uh, final nodes. So uh, here is our uh, numerical data. Uh, the first column indicates the X uh, component and the second, uh, second column uh, is the uh, Y component and the last, comp last column uh, shows the weights. So our positivity can be observed here. Okay, so oh, finally, uh, this is the worst case error. Uh, so I'm sorry that uh, I failed to uh, show the uh, worst case errors uh, given by the sequential Bayesian quadrature. Uh, so uh, let me uh, do it in another uh, opportunity. Okay, uh, let me conclude this talk. Uh, we uh, provide a method uh, to construct Bayesian quadrature formulas for the Gaussian kernels uh, by their truncated expansion 
uh, which provides a logarithmic energy with an ex external field. In one dimensional case, uh, we can obtain the nodes by convex optimization of the logarithmic energy. In two dimensional case, uh, we can obtain the nodes in a similar manner. Uh, however, uh, the convexity of the determinant logarithmic energy is not guaranteed. Uh, but uh, in, in, in numerical test, uh, it, is, it seems to uh, be obtained, uh, they seem to be obtained easily by a easy numerical routine. Uh, in both cases, uh, the corresponding weights uh, seem to be uh, positive, uh, although uh, we have not confirmed that theoretically. So, uh, the theoretical uh, guarantee uh, of these facts uh, are uh, topics uh, for future work. Okay, that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention.